Hi guys and welcome back to Switch Up. Thanks to you we've hit 50,000 subscribers and as promised the winner of our big giveaway will be announced in the next list video due any day now. A massive thanks for helping us to reach this crazy milestone. If there's a single genre most underrepresented on the Nintendo Switch, then I think shooters are going to be way up there. I literally do not know why we haven't seen Call of Duty yet. Rebellion aimed to fix all of that with a remaster that sets the bar and puts the competition to shame with some solid online functionality and other Switch exclusive features. Is it a headshot or way off target? Let's find out. Controlling Carl Fairburn, who is tasked with killing General Frank Varlin, the story will lead you through many theatres of war with a heavy focus on the Africa Corps, the notoriously tough holding force deployed to reinforce the Italian regiments in North Africa. Proceedings play out against a much more vibrant backdrop than previous titles. As ever, pre-mission story segments are hand-drawn voice narrated, with the slightly dull Fairburn doing an okay impersonation of Duke Nukem. It was nice that they used many of the real conflicts that took place, and the entire story facilitates a famous battle, lending some credence to it. That being said, it's easy to lose track at times, and the narrative isn't always handled too well. Often you might forget why you're actually infiltrating that castle in the first place. The game offers several difficulty modes. The harder options offer more realistic bullet ballistics with a handy wind gauge at the top of the screen, making accurate shooting based on environmental factors a possibility. Once again, you will be controlling your character from a third person perspective, allowing you to crouch, go prone, sprint or use cover to avoid detection. I mentioned at the start of this review that this might just be a port done right and I'll tell you for why. The controls include motion controls and the very detailed HD rumbled heartbeat are excellent. The granular levels of feedback offered by those split Joy-Con when aiming down the scope is second to none aside from obviously a mouse and keyboard and makes Sniper Elite 3 easier to control on the Nintendo Switch than the other two big boys. Unlike the previous title they opted for much more open maps. Think early Hitman games and you'll have a decent idea of how much of the game plays out. With so many alternating routes and a wealth of objectives it can be quite daunting when you first start out. Using your binoculars, you'll be scouting and tagging up to seven enemies. This will show their locations through walls and comes in incredibly useful for keeping tabs and planning your next move. In the easier difficulty modes, you can save almost anywhere, allowing for quick reloading to that location. But as you reach the hardest modes, the entire level must be completed in one take, so to speak, offering a ton of replayability as well as a serious challenge for veterans. Enemies will be going about their patrols, chatting, smoking or repairing things within the world. There's a lot of life here and the attention to detail shines through. Mission objectives can be overlaid over the HUD, allowing you to glance around the screen for the next target rather than having to open the map screen. Optional missions will arise as well and the opportunistic player will want to tackle some of these to gain extra experience which is tracked by your current rank. Higher ranks unlock new gear, weapons and customizations. I much preferred the level designs this time around and to emphasize the need to act as a real sniper you're given gameplay incentives to do just that. If you take a shot that can be heard you'll be given a relocation distance whereby if you sprint to it within a certain amount of time then you'll unlock the ghosts status and get a relocation bonus. In addition to the standard rifles, there are a much broader range of other weapons, including pistols, machine guns, grenades and traps. These range from tripwires to landmines and allow you to combine gameplay elements like the relocation into a deadly back and forth game of cat and mouse, except the mouse left a half pound explosive rigged up to a piece of tripwire. If you prefer to go the way of the ninja remaining undetected, you're given many more ways to do that as well. Chief among them is the ability to mask the sound of your shots with loud environmental noises such as artillery, radio chatter or the improvised racket of a sabotage generator. If ever there was a game to relive the classic enemy of the gate scene, it was this. 
It's a very clever mechanic to use to make the game more realistic. It means that those tricky shots feel twice as rewarding as you'll sometimes have to react quickly and accurately without the long preparation time you might want. When enemies have heard a shot or witnessed an enemy body, they'll enter search mode. This can be used to your advantage by throwing pebbles to draw them into your line of fire or bring them away from their comrades but you'll often have to lay low for a while in cover your current visibility shown here by the eye icon. Very occasionally, the AI can be a little bit hive-minded, whereby one will be alerted and the rest instantly know where you are. It's not often, and the game gives you a good indication of the alert status of those who see you, but it was particularly noticeable in co-op mode, where Glenn could see the entire level suddenly honing in on me. Now, you could argue they have some ninja radio skills, but still, it's a touch immersion breaking. The X-ray system and slowdown mechanics make a welcome return, allowing you to hold your breath for a short amount of time. These are also much more detailed than the previous offering, now showing the cardiovascular system, allowing you to enjoy in slow motion the carnage that a chunk of metal traveling at a thousand meters a second can inflict on a human skull, and it won't just be people you're shooting at. There are times where vehicles must be disabled using your armor-piercing rounds, and even tanks have their weak spots. The single-player experience is good enough with lots of secrets to find throughout it, but the game excels as a multiplayer one. The very nature of sniping lends itself to both cooperative play, but also competitive. In co-op, then, you can play through the entire campaign with a friend locally or online. You can't split the screen, and you will require two copies of the game. The online play is quite seamless. Glenn and I played for around three hours and only experienced one minor hiccup. Working as a team in a game like this is exceptionally fun, and marking targets and executing simultaneous takedowns hugely satisfying. Checkpoints are saved often by the game allowing you to quickly retry if one of you messes up, and if you have that option available to you, I'd say this is the best way to enjoy the game. Other online modes of note are the excellent survival. Here, much like the Horde mode in Gears of War or a similar title, you'll be fighting against waves of attacking enemies. Between rounds, you get a few seconds to restock ammo and perhaps relocate to a better position, but the frantic run-and-gun sniping is very enjoyable. You could easily end up sinking a huge amount of time just high score chasing in this mode. Competitive sniping pits you in either deathmatch or team-based games, and there are several modes to choose from. I can't go into too much detail as there aren't currently any players online, but in V2 this was also another great way to spend your time. There is a heavier emphasis on stealth play this time around, which might not appeal to all players, but as a fan of those older Hitman titles, it really clicked with me. I enjoyed it a lot. Gameplay scores 17 out of 20, while the excellent controls score 19 out of 20. The only issue here is more down to the Joy-Con design, whereby motion controls, sometimes in all games, can drift off. Visually, the game looks and performs terrifically on the Nintendo Switch. I'm going to go out on a limb and say it might be in the top 3 in that regard. There is none of the blurriness we have seen in so many titles, and as you can see from the handheld footage, it both runs and looks fantastic. Textures aren't perfect, but the improved lighting makes what is here shine in docked and handheld modes. Frame rates seem to be an almost rock solid 30 frames per second, with native or near native resolutions providing a nice crisp image. Audio is decent enough, although the voice acted main character has about as much personality as a bag of bolts. Sound effects are excellent, but I had an issue there. Directional sound seemed just a touch off. When you're spotted, the game seems to think, right, the player's been spotted, we want him to think there are loads of players all around him. Quick, play loads of voices of loads of soldiers all around him, even if there aren't any. It was really irritating, as you'd be looking around, positive that there weren't any people around you, but you can hear them nonetheless. It could be a result of poor acoustic modelling, whereby distant voices seem closer than they actually are, but I noticed it instantly. Music is your by-the-numbers band of brothers meets a part-time orchestra affair, and it does a good job. Environmental sounds are decent and give life to the levels. Visual score 19 out of 20, while the audio scores 15 out of 20. The game launches at £26.99, €31.49 or $31.49, but it can be had cheaper physically. There will undoubtedly be many correctly pointing out that this is pretty expensive for a game that can be had on other platforms for a fraction of that price. Now, a counter-argument would be that they've clearly spent the time improving this version and porting it right, but it will still be a hard sell for anyone not interested in the Switch's mobility. If you're looking for a solid co-op shooter though, this is an absolute blast, and it is 
is once again nice to have an Ultimate Edition arrive with all the DLC and extra stages. There is a huge amount of gameplay to be had here, which is invariably more fun with a power long for the ride. Value scores 15 out of 20. Sniper Elite 3 Ultimate Edition on Switch might be an older game, but it represents one of the best realistic online shooting experiences you can have right now on Nintendo's Hybrid. The porting has been handled excellently, and everything looks far better than it has any right to in the palm of your hand. It scores a Switch Up score of 85%. Thanks so much to all of you that's brought us up to this 50,000 subscriber milestone. I remember chatting with my wife last year when we had like three subscribers a day and maybe 100 views, but the dream was real even then, you know? A big thanks to all of you. Thanks to our patrons as well who support the channel each and every month. Remember, you can join them from as little as a dollar, and it really does mean the world to Glenn and I. For all things Switch, all the time, keep it Switch up. Cheers, guys. See ya!